Welcome, my friends, to the Matthew Street Channel. And folks, where do I begin? How do I unpack this? How do I communicate this to you and get it across? I'm just going to start at the beginning, folks. I'm going to go through my day today. All right. Bear with me. I'll try not to make this too long. But I am here to give my official review of the brand new Beatles song, Beatles single. Never thought I'd be saying that in 2023 for now and then. Okay, so I had to work today. And I do a lot of driving for my job. And I knew I would have the ability with Bluetooth and whatnot to stream the song as soon as it came on at 10, either through the Beatles channel. Plus, don't forget what I found out, iHeartRadio, Radio, the way we say it here, all over the country was playing this song right at 10 o'clock as well. So that was a good feather in the cap of the Beatles that even iHeartRadio, that big corporate monstrosity that's ruined radio in this country, they actually jumped on board and were going to be streaming the song as well at 10 o'clock. So I had multiple choices to listen to this song. YouTube was also going to be streaming it. So I was ready ready to go, had my vehicle. I knew where I would be would be driving, and I knew that at 10 o'clock I'd be ready to go. Also, numerous channels on Sirius XM, not just the Beatles channel, about 12 other channels on Sirius XM were also simulcasting, playing now and then, approximately the same time, somewhere between 10 and 10 minutes past 10. I looked, I checked them all these stations, and they were all were playing it around that time. So there was a, a big lead up to this thing, a big build up to it. And then when 10 o'clock was there, I was listening on the Beatles channel on Sirius XM. And Chris Carter said, we're going to have a special guest introduce the song. And it was none other than Paul McCartney himself gave a short little brief intro to the song. Basically what he said was, hey, we're about to play you a magical, something magical and special and it was written by John, and it's being played by John, Paul, George, and Ringo. And then he went into a little thing like right at the end, I thought it was kind of funny. He said, hope you enjoy it, but if you don't, too bad. <laughs> so I thought that was kind of cute of Paul to say that. So what I did is I pulled into a parking lot. I got to a safe location right around this time when all this was happening, the intro and the song was getting ready to start. I had been texting some friends just prior to that and, and you know, Beatle buddies and stuff on YouTube and whatnot. And that was really cool. And um, I waited and I waited. And like I said, right before Paul came in with his intro and Chris Cotter introduced them, they were playing all the Beatles singles leading up to this. So they were playing Let It Be and You Know My Name, Look Up The Number. I'm like, come on, hurry up. Will you come on? Let's go. You know, oh, nothing against those songs, but I wanted to hear the new song so much. And um, yeah, it, it was absolutely wonderful when 10 o'clock hit and they started playing the song. Okay, so. Now I have to go into my thoughts on it. And I got a bunch of notes here, believe me. Okay. I love the opening to it. It opened up with the piano banging great. And again, I'm not gonna be a sports caster like I said last night and go, ah, and then this little musical part, I'm not gonna do an audio file thing like that. I just wanna speak from the heart here, folks. All right. When it first played, the first time I heard it, I was, there was so much build up to this song, okay? Remember I made my video back on July 30th telling you that Now and Then was coming with the red and blue update and all that stuff. I had known about that in early July. My source, Maverick, bless you Maverick, gave me that information early July, but asked me to hold it. And then he gave me the green light, the go ahead on July 30th to tell you that news or report it here on my channel. So since then, building up to this, there has been so much anticipation, excitement, build, 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 that naturally when something finally happens and, and you're expecting like the heavens to open up and, and, the, and the waterworks to open in your eyes and, and the tears just dripping down your face. That didn't happen to me the first time I heard it. And that surprised me a little bit because last night I was a little bit emotional when I was telling you about the short mini documentary, the 12 minute documentary about the making of Now and Then. That documentary, 
I have, I'm just being honest here in the beginning, got me more emotional than the first time I heard, actually finally heard now and then. Does that make sense? I, I, I was getting into it, and there were a couple of parts during the song um, when John's voice first comes in right at the beginning, so pure and, and, and true. That got to me a little bit. And then the part when the chorus comes in and starts soaring, you know, when the chorus opens up that first time, that got to me a little bit. And when Paul started playing that George-influenced or tribute to George slide guitar solo, that got to me a little bit. But I guess I had a lot of expectations that it was just going to, my that I was going to become a blubbering mess, a, a bowl of jelly, and I didn't. But that's okay. That's not a negative. I'm just saying I expected that, and it didn't happen the first time. Like I said, everything was, the opening was great. And the lyrics, although very simple, I've heard some people complain about the lyrics. I'm not. I love the lyrics. I love the poignant message to this song. The lyrics are very basic and very simple, but I love them. I love them so much. And listen to the lyrics and tell me if you don't feel the same. I've experienced a lot of loss in my life, folks, with friends, family I loved. I, I, I talked about it last night in my video, go see that, the hurt I've experienced, the hurt you've experienced. And this song just touches that in me. You know, when that first now and then I miss you line came in, I, it just kills me. I love that line. Now and then I miss you. And I can that line's hitting me right now because I miss so many people in my life. And yeah, now and then I, I miss them. I miss them greatly. And the other lines seem to sing to me about going through a tough time in your life and, and being there for somebody or somebody is there for you. And the way John's singing about how it's all because of you. I know it's true. It's all because of you that I'm here and I'm surviving and I'm, strong it's all because of you if not for you where would i be who would i be i, I just the lyrics are so simple but there's such a, a great message behind them that hits me personally in my life and I'm, I'm wondering if they do you too i loved everything in this song and i gotta say the more i listen to it so that first time i was expecting the waterworks to open and they didn't but i kept listening and listening and listening during my eight hour shift today at work Whenever I got a chance, now and then was on. I was playing it. I had it on Spotify and over and over again and really got, and folks, the more I listened to it, the more it built. The emotions built in me, the message, the simple basic message of the song, which I just talked about, built in me and crept into my heart and soul and just, it spoke to me. I'm sorry. All right, call me, call me a clown, call me a blubbering mess. I don't care. It built and built throughout the day to the point that I absolutely love this song. Am I here to say, oh, it's, it's better than Long and Winding Road, Let It Be, Hey Jude, Magical Mystery Tour, Strawberry Fields, Penny. No, I'm not here to say that, folks. No one's here to try to build this song up into being that. You know, what those songs were and what they represented to the Beatles during the Beatles' heyday. I'm not saying that. But is it a cherry on top of the Beatles' cake, a little something extra along with Free as a Bird and Real Love to say, yep, there's the third cherry on top of the cake that the Beatles gave us another gift in 2023, 61 years after Love Me Do came out? Yeah. It's a cherry on the cake. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong, like I spoke last night, about bringing some joy into the world and some love to fans of music and the Beatles. Why not? All right? It's better than the alternative. It's better than nothing. It's better than negativity and, and, and pain and suffering all the time. And obviously it sounds better. I wrote this note. It obviously has a better sound overall than Free as a Bird in Real Love because you know, the new technology with John's voice and just it's 2023, the new recording techniques. So it has an overall better aesthetic, sonically, sound-wise, John's voice, much better than those two songs, although I still love Free as a Bird and Real Love. So I will definitely put it on par with those two songs. It fits right in. 
it, you know, I, I hope someday if they redo the anthology project and we get a Blu-ray or 4K of anthology and added material and they fix up the audio CDs and albums of it, I hope that maybe even though it's going to be on the Blue Album now and then finally gets its rightful place at the beginning of Volume 3 of the anthology. That's my personal thought. So right now, I rank those three songs because that's where I put it. I'm not trying to put it better, like I said, than Long and Winding Road or Strawberry Fields. I'm not doing that. These are separate three little cherries on the Beatles cake. And I am ranking the three songs right now as listening to this song all day today. Free as a Bird is my number three. <clears throat> now and Then is number two. And Real Love still remains, as it always has for me since the mid-90s, number one. Okay, and that's not bad for now and then to jump into the number two spot for me. Although I love all three of those songs for different reasons. Real Love is always going to be number one in my heart. I just love it. And then I'm going to put now and then at number two. Uh, so although it didn't cause tears for me the first time, the joy was there. The joy was present. And the joy and the emotions built during the day. I'm just reading some notes as I speak to you. And to know that this band from 62 to 2023 can still be a major part of our lives and touch us, words can't even express it. Can't even express it. And I just think it's a fine addition to the, to the Beatles' legacy. It's just, like I said, I keep going back to that term, cherry on top of the cake. It's there. And one last thing I want to say about it, folks, is that I'm sorry to know the joy that has brought so many people I've heard from today I reached out to my two sons and asked them to send me their thoughts on it and both of them for different reasons I don't have their thoughts right in front of me but they both love the song um, many of my commenters that I read today commenting on my previous videos about this were just so so hopeful and so happy and so joyful to hear it. And I even had a couple of people write to me and tell me about some hardship in their life right now and that this means so much to them. And I just wrote back to them and said, I really pray and hope it helps you through. The sun will rise again tomorrow for you. Be strong, get through it. I've been through the tough times. The sun rose again for me. I got through it with support of love and love from family and friends. And I had the music of the Beatles to help me through it. And this song has really lifted me spiritually today and emotionally because of that simple message to it, which I spoke about earlier. So I'm not gonna lose it here, folks. I'm just gonna say I absolutely love the song again. Is it better than yesterday? No, but it's a worthy addition to the legacy of the Beatles. It's a beautiful song. I think of words when I listen to it today, like words like majestic came flooding in and elegance, magical, as Paul said in his introduction and touching, emotionally touching. Um, it's there, folks. It's there. If you, if you let it in, let it into your heart. Don't close the door on your heart and soul, folks. Open it up. Open it up and give the song a chance. Listen to it several times. Give it a chance. Judge it for what it is and what it's bringing to us now. Okay? That's it, folks. I don't want to take up too much time. I've already run to 14 minutes. I apologize, but I had to do it. But I want to say one last thing. I also listened to the flip side quite a bit. Love Me Do 2023 version. And wow, sounded awesome. As I was speaking to one of my YouTube friends, Rich, about it, the song pops. Love Me Do pops. This new demix, remix, whatever you want to call it, sounded wonderful. I, you know, I, I don't, I'm not one of these that put on Love Me Do every day, but listening to this new mix, I listened to it over and over again. It was so in your face and so intense. So that just makes me think, wow, give me the Red Album. 
I mean, I want the blue album too. Don't get me wrong, coming next week. But the red album with these new 2023 early mixes, if Love Me Do sounded this good, hang on to your beret. Hang on to your hats, folks. Your rubber sole beret. Because this red album is going to be un freaking believable the sound of it whoa i cannot wait so folks i'm out of here 15 minutes i apologize so long i love you love you love you thanks for being here i love this song now and then i'm gonna go listen to it again take care everybody i hope you enjoyed this and come back tomorrow i'll give my thoughts on something i'm very much anticipating the song now and then the official music video created by peter jackson and his team Hold on, hold on, hold on. It's going to be special. I know it. Bye-bye.